Hey everybody and welcome back to the Moonlighter Tip Series. First few things I have to cover before the video starts is one, I'm sorry for not getting these out as quickly as I would have liked. My wife and I actually just finished the horrible process of moving and getting all of our crap unpacked and whatnot. So this video is going to be just one big combination of both the desert and the tech dungeons, including both shop level 3 and 4. Also I have to shout out Grumpy Boy for letting me know about something I missed regarding the cursed item room. So pretty much the best way to avoid the monster that chases you is to put an item on the pedestal to replace the item that you took. It doesn't matter what you put back on the pedestal, just as long as you do put something back. For this video I'm going to organize it in 8 tips for each respective section. So desert and shop level 3, then tech and shop level 4. We have Crazy Pete, honored be his name, to thank for this one. Pretty much the healing pools that we come across in each dungeon leads us to the next floor. Generally, it points us in the right direction for each dungeon and it will always be before the next floor. Now, if you're looking to get into the next floor boss room quickly, then rooms with two or more exiting doors you can run into then back out. This gives you a general direction of where you need to go. Now, this tip is really only useful if you aren't looking to spend money on the guidance potions. Enemies in the desert dungeon are really telegraphed in their attacks. About the only guys that aren't are these cubed flame boys that have a quick laser attack. If you get close enough, this attack is instant and you'll need quick reflexes to dodge, or if you're like me, you just take the hit. There's also these polygon baddies that summon flame minions to attack you. Ranged is about your best friend in this situation, but you can defeat these guys if you dodge and attack, repeating the process over and over again. Naja, the Desert Guardian's body segments are unique in all of their attacks. If you have one that you are struggling with, then try to finish off that piece as quickly as you can. That way, you won't have to deal with it for the rest of the fight. Personally, I would try to destroy the one that summons flame minions as soon as possible. So for this boss, there is a weakness that you can exploit. Basically, what you need to do is try to get Naja as straight as possible, then release a charged up attack with your bow. The arrow will go through each of Naja's body segments and apply the same damage consistently through them. This is a quick way to whittle down this guardian. Shop level 3 is pretty amazing compared to the other shop upgrades as you will get more space and a shop assistant. She's pretty useful as she provides two main functions. One, she stops thieves and two, she can run the shop as you run the dungeon during the day at the cost of 30% of the items she sells. This is great for you especially if you are looking to run the dungeon all day and night. You can bring back a full load of items and escape with the pendant. This gives you full health and armor so you can run right back into the dungeon for the night raid after you leave the first hall of items back in the shop of course. So I might come back to this tip after a few days as I am planning on doing a review, but what it boils down to is do not invest with the banker. I don't know if this is a bug or something else, but I've given a ridiculous amount of gold to him and everything would be going good then it would mysteriously disappear. Searching the internet for guidance, I've seen similar results. Maybe this will be updated, but generally avoid him. Honestly, don't even get him unless you want the achievement. Regarding missions you receive from villagers, this is the easiest way to make money by just doing regular things like dungeon diving. You'll get a variety of missions, but for the ones where you need to fetch items, you might need the retaliator's help. Now I know everybody hates this guy, but you might come one short of completing the mission. You could always buy the last piece you need from him in order to get a good payday. Alright, so from here we are going to cover the tech dungeon and shop level 4. The tech dungeon is without a doubt the most difficult. All the enemies have lightning abilities and deal a ridiculous amount of damage. There is also an enemy type who explodes on death, so if you are using a short range melee weapon, be aware, this will not be pleasant for you. Now while all the enemies here are an annoying threat, they do have telegraphed attacks, but they are insanely fast, so you have to be constantly watching them as the lightning zone attacks cover a lot of area, so dodging might not get you out of the damage zone. Even with tier 4 weaponry, you will not be doing much to the baddies in this dungeon. What I recommend is running through the first floor as you won't be able to get much of the crafting components from there. Make sure you have the items on your wish list and try to get tier 5 weaponry ASAP. So if you haven't already upgraded your bed by now, then this should be a priority for you. Getting the final bed provides you with a massive amount of extra hit points and 3 overshields. These shields negate any enemy attack, but will be lost by anything you get hit by. The Tech Guardian is the Energy Flux and is absolutely the worst boss to fight out of the entire game. Thankfully, it can only move to the 8 pylons around the boss room. Grab your bow and get as far away as possible. While you won't be able to see it on screen, you can still do damage to it with your bow. This is the best way to save yourself from its quick attacks and beat it. 
Once you finally upgrade the Moonlighter to the Emporium, it repositions the shop once again, so remember to keep expensive items closer to you as even with the Assistant you could still lose items from thieves. The Tech Dungeon has a lot of skeletons inside it, and almost all of them drop Tier 3 and sometimes Tier 4 weaponry. These items are ridiculously expensive and are great to just sell by themselves. However, if you are looking to get the crafting achievements, then these provide a shortcut for you to just build off of them, but be careful not to sell them for too cheap. Now you know I hate to spoil things that involve the core gameplay. Thankfully, I thought of a way around this. Go to Vulcan's Forge to check with Andre about the prices. Basically, you can get a rough estimation of how expensive you should make it based on how much it costs to craft the items. Finally, the last dungeon has great items that you can farm in order to get plenty of gold to finish out some achievements that you are looking to nab. I highly recommend that you finish all of the crafting and town upgrades in this section as well. Another part I'd like to add is that if you are looking to complete the game in under 10 hours, then you should probably just go straight to the final boss as crafting and getting components is annoying unless you use he who shall not be named. Well that's all I have for this video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, it really means a lot to me. I actually have finally beaten Moonlighter, and after this vid goes up, I will be working on the last two videos that I will be doing for this game. Right now, both a review of Moonlighter and a complete boss guide are in the production shop as you're watching this, so be on the lookout. Anyway, leave a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to see these videos soon.